I've got a confession to make. Right now, Astra's broke. I'm broke. Anybody else broke? There's really no nice way of putting it. We simply don't have much money left in the bank. So this has forced us to get a little bit creative with our engineering solutions to the problems that we're currently having. Imagination. Right now we have a propulsion test that's just on the horizon, only one month away. So we have to build a lot of the structures that are required in order to make that happen. And one of those things is the rocket nozzle. After all, it wouldn't be much of a rocket if we didn't have that apparatus to direct the flame through the back of the rocket. One of the materials that you can use in order to make a rocket nozzle is graphite. This works great because it ablates as it gets hot, which means that it doesn't transmit that heat to the body of the rocket itself. This is what allows it to cope with those really high temperatures that are in the exhaust plume. So about two months ago, we actually created a design for a graphite nozzle, and we had it machined at a company which makes these types of things professionally. And in the end, we had a beautiful looking graphite nozzle. B-E-A beautiful. But unfortunately, the price tag for this nozzle was a bit of an issue. It came in at just over 500 euros. 700 billion and a trillion 300 million billion dollars. Now purchasing one nozzle for such a high price is maybe not too big of a deal, but unfortunately, graphite has a fatal flaw, which also turns out to be its main feature. It ablates. So after one or two burns, the size of the nozzle has changed and you kind of can't use it anymore. Considering that we want to perform multiple burns in our testing campaign coming up in a month, we kind of need a different solution than buying a bunch of 500 euro nozzles in order to accommodate this. Because as I said before, we're kind of broke. And there's no money in here! <laughs> so Astra has been hard at work trying to figure out how exactly we can manage to build a nozzle for cheaper than that 500 euro price tag. And the solution that we've come to is kind of a blast from the past. A past that's almost 3,000 years old. Because the material that we're gonna manufacture our nozzle out of is bronze. Now you may find our material selection a bit curious here because you probably haven't heard of a bronze nozzle before, but we think that we might be able to pull it off. The bronze that we're using is actually a little more advanced than the bronze that was being manufactured 3,000 years ago. Well, no fucking shit! Bronze is classically a mixture of copper and tin, but for us, instead of using tin, we're actually going to use aluminum. Now, aluminum bronze comes with many of the same thermal properties of just regular bronze, but you get a little bit of a strength upgrade. And there's one key component as to why we've actually chosen this, which is that we can manufacture it ourselves. Oh. If you remember back a couple of months ago, we actually made an aluminum nose cone with our casting furnace that we just acquired. But we can actually use the same furnace to make some aluminum bronze. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Okay, so we have measured out our copper and our aluminum. We're gonna put in 1,320 grams of copper and 180 grams of aluminum. And that should give us exactly 88% copper and 12% aluminum, making aluminum bronze. And this should be enough for us to uh, cast the nozzle. So this is what it kind of looks like if you put it all together in one place. So it's, as you can see, kind of mostly copper. And this is the furnace that we're going to be casting it in. But it's going to take a little while to get up to temperature. Right now it's sitting at about 100 degrees. It needs to get up to 1160 degrees. In our case, we just acquired this copper and aluminum by looking at local scrap dealers in our area. We got a lot of these materials off of eBay when manufacturers want to get rid of some of the waste material that comes in their manufacturing process. So this is a great way to acquire a bunch of somewhat expensive material for really cheap. Clever girl. All told, we spent about 20 euros for all of the material that you need in order to make one nozzle. So pretty good deal. The only sucky part to doing it this way is that you kind of have to do a lot of cutting. But hey, if you got a lot of time on your hands, this could be a great way to save a few bucks. Many hours later. With all the cutting complete, we also have to build our mold that we're going to use to pour the aluminum bronze into. The best way to do this that we have discovered so far is actually just to make a 3D printed model of the part that you want to cast. 3D printers are great at modeling complex geometry, which is kind of what's going on inside of our nozzle. So you can use that as a template in order for you to build your cast that you will then pour into. So you can use the output of a 3D printer 
to build the mold that you will then use to pour into later on. Today we're going to be doing a top pour in order to achieve this result because for a nozzle there's actually a hole that goes through the middle and you'll get better results if that hole is aligned vertically rather than being aligned horizontally. In a previous attempt we actually didn't quite have enough material to pour into the mold and we ended up with kind of a weird looking result. One thing to keep note of if you decide to go down an avenue similar to this is to try to pack your sand as tightly as possible. Oh, tight, 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 yeah! This is basically going to control the resolution of the cast later on. So if you have kind of a poor packing, you're not going to get quite the same quality on the surface of your part. Because this is a rocket nozzle, the quality of the finish is kind of really important. So we kind of spent a lot of time just packing in that sand as tightly as we could. In order to get the hole in the center of the nozzle, we had to break the mold into two parts, which would then clamp together along with the cope and the drag. In addition to this, we had to create a separate mold that was just for the core of the center of the nozzle. This way we can come out of the pour process with a hole already embedded into the nozzle material. Okay, uh, air holes, how are we gonna do those? We stuff. have the toothpick, but the toothpick is, as you can see, not long enough. <gasps> That's what she said. <laughs> so we need something better. Oh, what about that thing, that thing? Which, the number three. The number three? Be a very large one, but I suppose it's possible. Should I use a wood one or should I use a metal one? Where are my metal bits? Just... Okay, no. what's a good angle? This angle? Like this angle right here? Is that good? Yeah, that should be fine. You should go through, right? You should go right through. I see it yet. Oh, uh, yeah. I see it. Oh, no, yeah, it's it's true. True. It curved a bit, but it curved in the sand. Oh, it did? Wow. Yes. Oh, there's a banner on the website that support us on Sputnik. What? Up, up there, there's like a banner for supporting. Oh. Oh. There's like just a green box. For the crowdfunding. Ah. Let me just see if there's a link on the website to it. Can you click on it? On the support? No, no, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming. So here is the cast for the nozzle. The Bronze will basically go around the holes. It looks pretty nice right now, so um, I have a good feeling. One interesting factoid about aluminum bronze is that your change is actually made out of it. If you live in Europe, the 10, 20, and 50 cent coins are actually made out of a version of aluminum bronze, which contains about 5% aluminum and 90% copper. There are a couple of other metals in there, like zinc, which make up the rest of the 5%. But essentially, this means that you could just melt down coins in order to make an aluminum bronze if you were short of scrap material. But that would probably end up being more expensive because the value of the coin is actually worth more than the scrap of the metals. It would also be illegal because you're actually not allowed to melt down coins. For some reason, that's a uh, felony offense. You're going to jail. You're, you're going, going to jail. jail. Oh man, that's red. Boring. Next yeah, one. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Looks golden. What is this? Slide. What? Impurities. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. S L E G. Hmm? What's the spelling? S L E G. S L E G. Small stuff on the ground. Just let it burn. Yeah, spread it. <laughs> I mean, the paint on the ground are just. This is just fact. <laughs> I don't want it to like. Okay, 
It just came out of the sides. On the left it's side. The band is burning. Yeah, it's fine. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Okay, there's okay. one band that survived. Damn. One survived? Oh, yeah. And the one at the bottom. The one that didn't get burnt. Yeah, one at the bottom. Can take it out like this? At this point, it was just a matter of digging out the nozzle from the sand that we had just cast. Now, you can do this pretty quickly if you don't really care about reusing your sand, but the sand actually is somewhat expensive, so we try to reuse as much as possible. This is why we carefully dig out the good sand and separate it from the sand that gets burned by the casting process. Remember that bronze is being cast at over 1100 degrees Celsius, so this means that the oil that's in the sand ends up actually getting a little bit burnt. Oh, damn, this is a. Let's check this out. This is the air from the airport. See, that's like the. Oh. See? Properly. This is. Yeah. The pot? No, I guess the pot is already full. Um, we need a second all our towels just go this way. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? Did I balance them out? Wait, what? Well, three of them. Yeah, I don't get that. Either. Did you like start and redo it? Yeah, I mean you did. But I, yeah, maybe you need to clean off the. Oh man. So after a little bit of cleanup, we were actually able to finally complete this nozzle, and this is what the result looks like. As you can see, we're not just relying on the bronze in order to handle the high temperatures of the exhaust plume, we're also relying on this small graphite insert that is placed inside of the sort of the nozzle. This is the area that we're going to see the highest heat flux moving through, so we actually need to protect it a bit because the bronze just isn't quite thermally resistant enough. We're also going to put a layer of insulation over the top half of the nozzle, and this will help protect against the high temperatures of the combustion chamber. To be honest, because of the quality of our cast, we didn't have to do much on the lathe in order to clean it up like this. It was mainly just for shining purposes. So in the end, it actually ends up being a relatively efficient way to build a nozzle. Of course, the next step is to put this nozzle to the test. And that's exactly what we're going to do in about a month. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned in order to see that activity. And remember to expand your horizons.